So good morning uh, everybody, uh, welcome to this network analysis training today. Uh, my name is uh, Shahid Mahmood, I am an application engineer, I am working for Agile and Technologies since last almost 10 years, now Keysight Technologies, you are familiar that now electronic measurement group of Agile and Technologies has become the Keysight Technologies. So now you will see all the test equipment with Keysight Technologies. Uh, presentation still showing the name because we have old presentations and a lot of presentations so we are trying to still change the name on the presentations so it will take some time but PSIC is uh, the future of test and management so first of all uh, my plan is that uh, we will go for uh, through this presentation maybe one hour or something like that we will try to cover the network analysis basics some important parameters, what is the philosophy, what is the application, what is the use of network analysis, why we measure network analysis, like that, that's parameters. So I want to know uh, you guys that how much you are familiar with the network analysis uh, theory and application so that I can, I can manage myself accordingly. So I need not to go very basic in detail or I should not go uh, fast like that. So you let me know your information about the network analysis. I think we have many of, uh, people here, they, they did many measurements with the network, network analyzer. analyzer. Okay. But I would say, start from beginning, yeah. for those who who has not used the network analyzer before. Okay. So if we feel that it is so, I mean, trivial, yeah, then we will push you, I mean, no, skip this. Okay, okay. So I will go through... Uh, all the presentations so you can let me know that uh, this is okay for you okay. so here is the agenda so we'll go through uh, basically what is component test what is complex impedance because uh, network analyzer is based on complex impedance measurement all the parameters are based on complex impedance measurement then what is network analysis uh, network analysis some basic measurement of network analysis the transmission line, reflection, S parameters. These are the sub basics. There are so many advanced applications nowadays, but these are the basic uh, phenomena of network analysis, near transmission and reflection. Then uh, I have some slides uh, about the uh, hardware architecture, that how it works, what is inside the network analysis, the principle, the theory of the network analysis. So it may not be important, but it's uh, just we will go through to understand that how it works. So what is network analysis basically? The network analysis is uh, here in this picture we are trying to show you the network analysis is based on uh, transmission and reflection. The basic principle of network analyzer is it measure transmission and reflection of the DUT. DUT can be two port, we have just a simple two port DUT it can be four port, it can be multi ports. So the basic phenomena is that we measure the transmit, transmission and reflection. We inject the signal into the DUT. DUT means device under test. It can be any device you are going to test. So we inject the signal into the device and we measure the reflection and the, we measure the transmission. Mean how much signal is reflected back from the device and how much signal passed through the device to the second port to the output port. So this is basic <coughs> phenomena. And in network analysis, we measure uh, amplitude and phase. Spectrum analyzer is also used for uh, measuring the signal. But spectrum analysis only measure the amplitude, no phase. But the network analysis, amplitude and phase is give you both the information. In the below, you can see just uh, simple block diagram of the network analyzer. It has source built in. We generate a source through different uh, hardware and at the output port and then we connect the device under test and we measure the reflection at the port. Two. Inside we have different kind of receivers, a reference receiver, uh, port 1 receiver, port 2 receiver, different kind of receivers we use. We will go through in detail later on. But this is basic phenomena that we generate the signal inside the network analyzer, we transmit into the DUT and we measure the reflection and transmission on the port 2. Okay, is it clear? So this is basic architecture. 
very basic block diagram, how it works, so you should have idea. So this I have already gone through. So why we test components? Why we test electrical components? Uh, because in our systems, our system, electrical systems are co uh, constructed with different kind of components like building block of different components like amplifier. For example, if you go to the transmitter, there are different components. You will find amplifier, you will find mixer, you will find down converter, up converter. So, before we design or we construct or manufacture some components, we need to test, we need to verify the amplifier design, we need to verify the mixer design. All these components need to be verified. Whether when it go to the actual system, it will perform correctly. You understand the idea? So we need to verify the components in the design phase, their performance, their response, all their parameters before actually putting into the electrical system. So it may happen that do you design an amplifier of certain frequency in your game, but and you design this amplifier and you put into the system, but it's not behaving correctly. When you actually put into the system, it does not give you the uh, expected values or expect, expected response. So the idea is before you go to the actual environment or application, you need to verify the design of your components, electrical components. In and network analyzer is for that purpose. So there are different parameters uh, involved that we can measure with the network analyzer. So why we measure components to verify the design parameters of our components before actually manufacturing or before actually implementing in a real life. Okay? For example, antenna match. You want to, for example, you have the antenna for in your case and you want to use the antenna in actually some way for transmission. So you want to test, okay, is it, this antenna is behaving correctly? The impedance is 50 ohm. So it will behave 50 ohm. So you want to test with the network device. Because you don't know that whether in actual environment the impedance may be 45 plus some imaginary components. Then whatever energy you are going to transmit or you want to transmit, you cannot. So most of the energy will be reflected back. So this is one example that why you test the components. So because the basics of the network analysis depends upon the complex impedance. You may you may familiar with the complex impedance, what is the complex impedance? Because in the you may familiar. I think everybody is here. All, all of them are engineers. Okay. okay. So the complex impedance is a real part plus imaginary part. So to transmit I think to transmit the most of the efficient power transmission system should have the real Impedance, not the imaginary. Because, and these imaginary parts, it varies with the frequency, capacitor reactors and inductor reactors. <coughs> so these are the these are the main uh, culprits. Actually, we want to eliminate or we want to minimize during the design phase when we are talking about the impedance of our uh, transmission line or systems at higher frequencies. We have gone through component test, impedance and what is network analysis. So in network analysis, this is also the basic formula, you are familiar with that. When we go higher, higher in frequencies, then it, the transmission of, transmission of the power is becoming uh, difficult. So that, then we use the transmission line or uh, <coughs> At high frequency, we use transmission line or distributor circuit tuning rather than the normal uh, competition. In low frequency, we use the KHF laws, Ohm laws by calculating the voltage and current. It's very simple. It's okay. it's okay for low frequency, but at high frequency, you cannot use these uh, laws or these principles. 
when you go to a high frequency, then we use this transmission line theory, distributed circuit theory by calculating different parameters. In classical, we, we use to measure H parameters, Y parameters, F parameters, and in modern, we measure S parameters. So transmission line, uh, lower frequencies, so wavelengths are much la larger than the wavelengths, so simple wires are, is, is okay to transmit the power at lower frequency, you can measure the voltage and current, you can use the normal V is good IR formulas to calculate voltage, current and the power. This is for low frequencies. But when you go high frequencies, the wavelengths are very very small and it's very difficult to measure the voltage and current because voltage and current are not constant across the transmission line at higher frequencies. Your voltage is varying at each point after every quarter of the wavelength your current is varying, sometimes your current increasing, voltage decreasing, but your power is constant always across the transmission line. So the idea is to measure the power, not to measure the voltage and current to characterize the higher frequency components of transmission lines. Right? So these are the few kinds of transmission lines. Uh, we use for different frequencies, twisted pair for lower frequencies, then coaxial cable for higher frequencies, then even for the millimeter and above we use wave cards and co planners and we can measure all these six parameters, SWR, the S11 and S22. These are the reflection parameters, port 1 and port 2. Reflection coefficient, impedance, admittance, return loss. These parameters we can measure by using the reflected measurement, <coughs> the ratio of reflected and incident signal. So what we do is, we when we inject the signal, we measure the reference signal. There are, uh, there are different kinds of receivers when we go into the architecture of the network analyzer, we'll see. So different receiver for different measurement, and then we take the ratio, right? Similarly, by using the ratio between the transmit, transmitted signal and incident signal, we calculate the transmission parameter of your device. Mean how much your signal is transmitted through the device. So it is gain, it can be gain, your device can be amplified, it can be loss, your device can be attenuated, or S parameters mean S21, S2, S21 and S12, these are also gain and loss transmission coefficient, insertion phase and group, group delay. So these are the these are called transmission parameters, these are called reflection parameters. So based on these uh, two signals, transmit and reflected, right? You are familiar with all these terms? Yes. Huh? Yes, yes. So here how we, there is a mathematic formula to calculate the uh, reflection parameters. These are all interlinked with each other. If you know the reflection coefficient or if you know the V reflection <coughs> or V incident ratio, you can calculate all these things. These are interrelated. The turn loss is the logarithmic form and then VSWR is the <coughs> maximum power and minimum power reflection. It is just giving you the, if your reflection coefficient is zero, then turn loss will be infinity and VSWR will be one, in ideal case. And in worst case, on the other side, right side. It can be between somewhere. Smith chart is uh, also a technique to measure the complex impedance. In, at high frequency, we use Smith chart to measure the capacitive reactors, inductive reactors, and all this. With respect to phase. Again, the same thing, transmission parameters, how we measure the transmission parameters, uh, transmitted upon incident. Excuse me, go back again. Yes. Uh, can you say something about 
Twenty log. Twenty log tau is the transmission coefficient. How we calculate transmission coefficient? In the first example. You see the first example. Can measure it with this? Sorry? You can measure it. What? With the help of network analysis. Game. Game? Yes. Yeah. We can measure the game. Actually, at certain, at one particular frequency. Yeah. Right? One but, uh, actually, the uh, if you go back to the previous slide, if you have seen, the gain and loss, okay? the transmitted upon incident, yes. it's a gain or loss. Yes. Mean you are transmitting some signal and you are measuring at the output port. So the ratio of the output to the input yes. is a gain or loss. So mean the output of device may be more than the input yes. signal, right? If it is more than, so it means your device is amplifying some, it, it's amplifying right. something, it right. has right. some gain. It use two ports here. Yeah, you need, for the gain and loss measurement, you need two ports. And two, uh, two ideal devices. Sorry? What about the devices? Any two port device, any two port device. Two because Gain is always uh, a ratio yes. between two ports, yeah. output port to input port. So gain is always ratio. So you need to have two port device. So inject on one port, measure on the second port. But if you have one port, he's talking in terms of that. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, I heard your part. It's, it's 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 something uh, you can uh, you uh, it's it's uh, there's a lengthy procedure. You can measure again, but you need. Uh, there, there are two ways. One, the professional ways is the antenna measurement system, okay. like the Dr. Dhanan has okay. uh, antenna measurement system. That is used to measure the gain of the antenna, right? If you want to use the network, only the network analyzer, uh, there is a procedure, but you need to have uh, three or four reference antennas. Okay. And you can, uh, you can, because, because for the gain measurement, you should have always the reference, right? It is ratio between two, two powers. So you, there is a procedure. Different people use different techniques by using network analyzer. By using, they first use the reference antenna to transmit the signal. Because you also need to use the free space. So it depends upon the free space between two antennas. Because you are transmitting from the antenna, you are receiving on the antenna. So maybe. Uh, your antenna gain is not actually what you are measuring depend upon the gap, the free space, so all these these factors you have to take. Do we look, I mean, in terms of uh, the gain which is the transmitted with respect to the omnidirectional antenna? So if you have omnidirectional antenna which is almost circular, then if you have something is bigger, so they may take this one, the difference as sort of gain. Linear phase, exactly. Because if it is linear phase, the group delay is constant. Constant, yes. Okay. True. But definitely in this case, you will not find I mean, the group delay is constant. It is, it is very good for frequency. Yeah. I think what we have asked you how to measure the radiating power, like 50 watt, 60 watt gain of a horn antenna or something like this. Yeah, that's we already spoke that that those things mean the radiation pattern, the gain, and the, all those things are basically measured by using the antenna measurement system. Using network analyzer, but using the scanner, the reference antenna. The scanner does it, it has the reference antenna, it transmits the signal to your device under test, network analyzer measure, so it knows that how much signal is transmitted, it knows the distance between two antennas, the wavelength, and it calculates the gain and the sensitivity of your antenna is like that. You need reference antenna for that one, for to calculate the gain. By using network, a simple network analyzer, what you can measure, you can measure SWR of the antenna. You can measure the flexion coefficient, you can measure impedance, admittance, you can measure return loss, but uh, uh, yeah, S11. So of all these reflection parameters you can measure. But transmission parameters we cannot measure by using network, simple network analyzer because 
but for the transmission parameters we need we, we have to have the second port the, of the device right because antenna is one port device so all these parameters can we can measure but we cannot measure the gain and we cannot measure the radiation pattern what if we have MIMO? we have two ports we have two ports from MIMO. No, in, even in my mode, two ports is not input and output. Two ports, yeah. I mean, the incident. Incident. So, two by two or something. But if we have two antennas, and I we have antennas there, we will show you now. They do not periodic antennas. So, we can connect one or one port and other one. Other and then we can measure S21. In that case, can we measure the transmission? Yeah, you can estimate. You can estimate. You can estimate means you transmit from one antenna and you receive from uh, you know the signal at the uh, at the transmitter. reference transmitter antenna and you can receive and you can transmit it but you have to mean you have to somehow estimate the loss between in the free space that how much can be lost that's by the calibration you can use the no 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 what i'm saying the for example you are transmitting from this antenna you are receiving at this antenna there is a free space so some signal is attenuated in the free space. That's exactly. Uh, but if, if the mean is very narrow, mean, well, the distance is one meter or so. Yeah, you know the theory. If 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 there is a narrow beam, and then you can receive mean the you can create the scenario in which you can receive the maximum signal alignment <coughs> or something like that. In that case, you can uh, you can uh, we we'll try this. Uh, we can try this one. By, by using two antenna, but it's not actual measurements. It's uh, just estimation. Yeah, here is uh, we are trying to show that in uh, distortionless transmission line, we try to get this kind of response in terms of frequency and in terms of phase. We want linear phase change, and we want the flat frequency response. But components behave differently. Maybe you have non-linear phase change, maybe you have the, uh, the frequency drift at the output of your device. So basically we measure the scattering parameters, you know, in classical circuits, or low frequency circuit, we use these parameters, H, Y, Z parameter for low frequencies, voltage and current measurement, creature flaws and flaws are applicable but not more applicable for high frequencies so we use this phenomena from where this S parameter comes in by using these techniques we measure the incident A1 we measure the reflected B1 B1 is a reflected signal and transmitted signal from the second port and by using this formula we calculate S11 and S21. Similarly for the other port, S22 and S21. And there is a relationship between S parameters and the Y and the Z. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, we can so convert. Can convert, convert yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is in case of forward transmission. Oh, we may have two S parameters, S11, S, S21, we may have in case of forward transmission. and. The other two parameters we calculate by using the reverse transmission. So why we use H, Y, Z parameters and low frequency? Why we use S parameters? So these are few advantages and disadvantages. And why we use S parameters? Why we don't use these parameters H, Y, Z at high frequencies? So accuracy of S parameters, it, it depends upon your uh, Z naught, that how good is the characteristic impedance of your device or transmission line and how good is your error correction techniques, mean the calibration, the vector error correction techniques uh, we use for the calibration, it's a later topic. So the accuracy depends upon these two main factors. 
So we use normally these terms for these as parameters. Uh, forward reflection, reverse reflection, forward transmission, reverse transmission. These terms are commonly used, so it's uh, S parameters. Here is a S21 and S12. Here is S21 is a gain or loss. When we measure the S21, it means we are measuring the gain or loss. And we select S21, we are measuring the gain or loss. When we are mining S11, we are mining reflection. But this is only in case of antenna. But if you are mining a transmitter. In a, no, in every case. In every case. The antenna, I, I think, the antenna because we have only one port. In antenna case, we measure only reflection S11 or S22. If we are using one, uh, the, the port 1, we, may, we are measuring S11. If we are measuring on the port 2, we are measuring S22. Okay, we have a filter. Suppose here we have a filter. Okay. Two antennas. Now I am wearing transmission through the antenna that both identical. Okay. So my S12 and S21 are the same. So how can the isolation equal to me? Sorry? I will mean, I mean, bring some antennas here. Okay. Some so filter. one antenna, then you are having filter? Yes, like a free space filter. We are trying to measure the transmission through the filter. It's a free space filter. Okay, free space filter, right. Yeah. We are working on frequency selective surfaces in the water. Okay. So we put and we have two identical antennas. Half they are the okay. same. Yeah. So in that case, S12 and S21 should be the same, right? Yes. If if your filter is two way. Yes. If your free space filter is two way, yes. so S12 and S21 should be the same. Yes. Right. But I think in the mind, for example, the mind antenna, what is the we use S12 and S21 as isolation, measure of the isolation or we call it the coupling between the two antennas. So if you have just antenna with, with two ports, sorry, right. uh, in this case, if I recall correctly, the S21 and S12 the same. So if you measure S12 or S21, you will get, you will get the same. Because you have two antenna because uh, the S12 and S21 in this case is measuring the isolation between the two points. Yeah, you can say because, uh, yeah, you can say. True. True. We will see. Yeah, we, have, we have spectrum analyzer, or we have network analyzer. So the one main difference between network analyzer and spectrum analyzer is in spectrum analyzer, we measure mostly the unknown signals, any unknown signals. Uh, we apply to the spectrum analyzer and uh, we make the measurement, right? But in network analyzer, your signal is always known. We always measure the known signal because it has built-in source and we know the frequency. We set the frequency of the source, so we know the frequency. So it is always known signal, one difference. The other main difference is that network analyzer has built-in source plus receiver. So it can generate the signal and we measure the signal, same signal. But spectrum analyzer is only receiver. So this is the main difference. And network analyzer we can do the vector measurements like phase and uh, spectrum analyzer we do only the scalar measurement. Only the amplitude information. There is no phase information available in spectrum analyzer. It's a block diagram how we design the network analyzer, the basic network analyzer. So the RF source actually generates the signal. Uh, we pump the signal into the device at the test. The incident signal, by using the directional coupler, the incident receiver is measured by the reference receiver and then the reflected signal we measure by using another receiver A and the transmitter signal we measure using another receiver B. So all these receivers are used to make the measurement. Reference receiver, receiver A, receiver B. If it is four port, then we are using the receiver C and D. And then we take the ratio of these measurements to calculate, to process all these parameters, right? And directional coupler is used as the signal separation because uh, 
it separates the incident signal and the reflected signal. It, these two <coughs> signals goes to two different receivers. The incident signal goes to reference receiver and the reflected signal goes to uh, receiver A. So this is called signal separation uh, device. Uh, direction coupler. We use sometimes we use splitter, sometimes we, but direction coupler is the best for signal separation. And then all these three signals <coughs> goes to receiver and detector and processing and then display. So this is simple. How we inject the signal? We use the as I said, sometime in classical network analyzer, we used to have the supplicator. And uh, the reference signal, we, we save it in the receiver, reference, R receiver, and then some signal transmitted and some signal is reflected. The reflected signal is, goes to into receiver A and then the transmitted signal goes to receiver B. So three, three receivers are used in case of uh, two ports. So what kind of source we use? We normally used uh, synthesized source, built-in synthesized source into the network analyzer. Signal separation we use the supplicator or we use the direction coupler, we use bridge, but nowadays modern analyzers we use the direction coupler because it is best for signal separation in terms of directivity because it can separate the two signals coming from two different directions with uh, good selectivity, uh, sorry, directivity. So every type of uh, signal separation component it has own advantage and disadvantage for some frequencies. So directivity is uh, how we avoid separate the signals coming from two different directions because one direction coupler is used to measure the reference signal and the reflected signal. So reflected signal is coming opposite of the incident signal. So this direction coupler is keeps all these all these two signals separate and send it to different receivers. So directivity, if directivity is good, then there is no leakage and these signals will not mix up with each other. If a direction coupler has poor directivity, then there are chances that mix up of some signal. Leakage. So red one is the reference signal and the blue one is a reflected signal when it comes back after reflection from the device. Both goes to two different receivers. Then we use different kind of detectors. In scalar network analyzer we use diode detectors. In some network analyzer we used a tuned receiver as a detector. Tuned receiver means we use a filter, precise filter to filter out the correct frequency. And similarly, every detector type has some benefit and some disadvantage. <coughs> we use broadband or narrow band detections sometimes. It's uh, internal actually architecture, that's why I'm going a little bit, little bit faster. Sir, Any question? Bandwidth. Is it bandwidth? Sorry? If bandwidth. I am bandwidth. Yeah, we have even in this. Yeah, yeah. There is a mean the resolution bandwidth. You know spectrum analyzer. There is a resolution bandwidth. So basically, resolution bandwidth. There is I filter, I F filter, right? I filter that we actually select that how much signal, what is the frequency? Because what is happening if we are using the tuned receiver in this case, spec, uh, network analyzer then you are using the mixer to convert the higher frequency to the lower frequency, IF frequency. And then you have the IF filter. So IF filter, what does it? It only passes the IF frequency, your signal of interest, and it blocks the other signals, right? You know the, the heterodyne receiver principle, right? Yes, yes. So what it does is it converts the high frequency signal into lower frequency, that is IF, and then to pass the IF, we have the IF filter that only pass through the IF signal, IF frequency. The other frequencies are blocked at that filter. 
to avoid the noise, to avoid the distortion. How much is the budget about the stage? I think it has uh, up to 10 megahertz, I think. 10 megahertz, up to 10 megahertz. Yeah, I feel Because IF frequency is low. Well, it, IF frequency actually, IF bandwidth depends upon the type of the mixer it is using. Because the network analyzer knows that what is the range of its IF frequency. So accordingly they have the IF filter. So when you change the IF bandwidth, you are changing the filter actually. You can change it now? You can change it? Yeah, yeah, you can set IF. And uh, the phenomena is that when you decrease the IF bandwidth, the noise is reduced. Because you are only filtering, only passing through the narrow frequency signals and then noise is reduced but the speed of the device is become slower. It's the same principle as we are having in the spectrum analyzer. So we fix it? No. No, you can change. That's what I am saying. It's up to you. You can play with that. I have bandwidth, you can change. And it affects the results? Yeah, of course. In fixing this one, what is on what basis we, we, we fix? Uh, actually, it uh, I uh, I filter actually depends upon the when you uh, decrease the I filter bandwidth, so it will uh, mean improve little bit noise because you are narrowing down the filter, yes, so yes. it will improve little bit noise. Okay. So but this is this is the, this is the, what is that? This is the advantage. Is the disadvantage is that you are, uh, uh, the sweep time, sweep time ah, will okay. increase, of course, a little bit. So, so. I have a non-technical question, non-technical. Yes. What makes this uh, network model so expensive? What is special in This is, I think, Russian. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, even, even Russian should not say anything. It's, it's a manufacturer. He has to answer. It's not the whole defender, right? Uh, actually, it's not network analyzer. It's frequency range. Actually. All the frequencies. If you go spectrum analyzer or signal sources, go in higher frequencies, they are, they are also expensive. So it's frequency. still, I mean, with this technology, what makes it such an expensive item? Because, yeah, special. There are special things. Okay, I tell you. Nowadays, I think in uh, RF microwave, all the researchers, there are so many applications that are based on network analysis. There are so many applications. If you go, for example, as parameters, you go the material measurement, you go the, the antenna measurement. So, so that we have demand and supply uh, formula. Because we need it for so many applications to make it as No, it's not demand and supply formula because they have to build all these features. It's also because I add one thing. Is it also because the RF equipments? I mean, there are just few companies or few manufacturers working in this in this area. And this is the reason they are monopoly. I mean, the yeah, market. maybe, maybe, maybe because they 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 are they are. I don't know. We don't know how they decide their prices. They, they, of course, it depends upon their R and D cost. They are, they are stay. We cannot justify because we don't know how they set their prices. But one thing about the network analyzer, because network analyzer, we are seeing a lot of changes, a lot of uh, additional features <coughs> every year or every few months. So there, people in R and D, they are doing very hard to improve the features and add on a lot of features. For example, this is simple network analyzer, S parameter, but it has, uh, uh, it, it, you can add into this network analyzer many, I think tens or 20 other measurement applications. You can do the noise figure measurement with this. You can do the pulse measurement, you can do the antenna measurement, you can do the material measurement, you can do many other measurements. I think we could do this even 15 years ago. Sorry? We could do the same thing with the network analyzer which we bought 15 years ago. So what is? For example, which one? I mean, even 15 years ago, if you look at the network analyzer, you cannot do noise figure. 
Antenna was always there. Because antenna is based on astrometer's <laughs> reflection. That's why the antenna was. This is, no, this is one also the antenna mega that uh, you are talking about 10 to 20 gigahertz. Yeah, only the bigger, but yeah. now, yeah, but now I mean, you are talking about the antenna which is working on 50, 100 gigahertz and this kind of thing. And if you see the more, uh, classical network analyzer features and the modern network analyzer features, you will see a lot of difference. Uh, maybe, maybe, I mean, this is the manufacturer support every research in this direction because they want to, the researcher to go for higher frequency. If they go for higher frequency, they will stick with, with this manufacturer. No, for they example, to to huh? for example, no, this network analyzer, uh, the classical network analyzer, the old network analyzer, you cannot go, you cannot extend the range of the network analyzer. But these network analyzer, you can go up to terahertz. This is this is the question. One of the questions that yeah, yeah. The you can go up to terahertz by using the external head. It is also one of the features that they built into the network analyzer, and you can use. You can add that option. That one, is, it, is it actual measurement or source of interpolation or whatever? No, it's actual measurement. Huh? Actual, actual measurement. It's actual measurement. But it has limitation. You have to put this up. That word. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, you you need external... If you, if you go with, with upper profile, you will go to the non-genialty and you will have... Yeah. Uh, Th those, uh, the, those extenders are specially designed for these high frequency measurement. And today, these network analyzers can go up to 1.1 terahertz, and but not by using the simple one extender. You have multiple extenders, for example, if you want to extend the range 50 to 75, you need uh, uh, two extenders. If you want to go 75 to 110, different two extenders. So it's a banded uh, configuration that goes up to 1.1 terahertz.